Welcome back. We're going to move into the trigonometry part of algebra and trigonometry today. We're going to start with a little bit of a review of triangles. Um, hopefully many of you have seen what we're going to cover today in uh, one form of high school geometry or elementary school geometry. This should be old stuff for you. That's what I'm trying to say. So, let's first look at a triangle. Uh, one thing we know about a triangle is that when you add the th measures of the three angles together, the sum of the angles is 180 degrees. Now, when we force one of these, or when we say that one of these angles is a right angle, making this a right triangle, that means that the other two angles, so the non-right angles of a right triangle, Well, that would mean they'd have to add up, this is 90, they all add up to 180, so it must be that these two add to 90. Uh, we have a special word for two angles that add up to 90. We say that they are complementary. So the two angles that are not the right angle are complementary to one another. And we can use this in our triangles. Let's say you've got a right triangle, and this angle here is 32 degrees. Well, we've got everything we need to find our third angle. Since this angle, the 32, and the unknown add up to 90, We just subtract and we get that our unknown angle must be 58 degrees. Now, I'm getting kind of lazy here with my degrees. We need to make sure we don't do that. So that's our first um, reminder I wanted to go over with um, triangles. There's another important fact on any triangles, and it works with right triangles as well, and that is the correspondence between the sides and the angles. Um, on a right triangle, the right angle must be the largest angle because if all the angles add up to 180, one of them is 90, the other two, neither one of them can be more than 90. So, on a right triangle, the side that's opposite the right angle is called the hypotenuse, and that will always be the longest side of a right triangle. Similarly, the other two angles, I don't know anything about them. I don't know which one is larger. However, I do know that the side opposite the larger angle will be the larger side. and the side opposite the shorter angle will be the shorter side. So the way that the sides and angles tie together is that the skinniest angle will be set up opposite the shortest side, the middle angle will be opposite the middle side, and the right angle will be set up opposite the hypotenuse. All right. A um, little theorem that we've used quite a bit in the past is the Pythagorean theorem. And that is, given some triangle with legs A and B, this is a right triangle with legs A and B and hypotenuse C, the relationship between the sides is that if you square each of the legs and add the, those two numbers together, you, the result, the sum, will be 
the square of the hypotenuse. And we're going to use this a lot. Uh, in particular, um, let's try one. Let's say we've got a right triangle with a hypotenuse of 13 and a leg of 12. Now notice this leg looks shorter, but I gave it a 12 there. We don't always have these triangles drawn to scale. So let's just go off to the side here and figure out what we're going to do. This third side, we can call it A, just to make it match the triangle I've already drawn, but we can call it whatever we want to. And the relationship we found is that one side squared plus the unknown side leg squared is going to equal the hypotenuse squared. So 144 plus a squared equals 169. a squared equals 25. And what we learned from uh, one of our first sections is that if you have something squared equals 25, then a has to equal plus or minus 5. Now, when we're dealing with triangles, we usually don't think of measurements as being in a negative amount. So for now, with the triangles, we'll ignore the negative, and we'll just say A equals 5. Okay, let's try another one. Uh, we're going to have some funny variables in this chapter. We're going to see a lot of triangles such as this one. Assume that this triangle is square. And often, the way we'll label them is the top angle will be called phi, and the bottom angle will be theta. The vertical will be X, which is our reactants. The bottom leg is R, which is our resistance. And the hypotenuse is Z, which is our impedance. So a typical problem you might run into would look like this. It would say, uh, how about if we have a resistance of 29 ohms and a reactance of 6 ohms, what is the impedance? Well, let's see. The impedance would be found by taking, uh, let's see, it's the leg squared. So one leg is 29. And then the other leg squared would be 6 squared equals z squared. And so to do this, I will bring up my little calculator. At this time, I see that 29 squared is 841 and I will add to that 6 squared is 36 giving me a grand total of 877. Now I will hit my square root button and that gives me a z value of 29 Point six one four one ohms, and we will uh, round that according appropriately according to uh, what we are instructed. Let's do this one to three decimal places. All right, uh, next part of this question will be pretty easy. And 
And that is which of the angles, theta or phi, is going to be larger? Well, as we have 29 ohms for our resistance and 6 ohms for our um, reactants, 29 is larger than 6, so the angle corresponding opposite to the leg 29 will be the larger angle. So we would say B is larger. All right, last thing we want to do in this section is to go over our trig functions. Given a triangle, and considering one of the right angles in that or one of the angles in a right triangle. We're going to label the legs according to their relationship to that angle. The hypotenuse will always be the hypotenuse, it'll be the longest side. But of the two legs, one of them is considered to be opposite this angle, and opposite being over here, and one of them will be considered adjacent. And in other words, it is part of the angle. That side is needed to create that angle. Given that definition, we are going to define our trig functions this way. Sine, which is abbreviated S-I-N, sine of theta is going to equal the opposite over the hypotenuse. Cosine, in other words, uh, COS of theta is going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And tangent, which is abbreviated tan of theta, is going to be the opposite over the adjacent. So we'll start with these definitions, and with those definitions in mind, let's consider our triangle we just discussed, where theta is in the bottom, P is in the top, our vertical line is our reactance, our horizontal line is our resistance, and our hypotenuse is our impedance. Given this triangle, then we would see that sine of theta is, let's see, the opposite would be x, hypotenuse would be z, x over z. Cosine of theta would be adjacent to the theta is r, and the hypotenuse is z. Tangent of theta would be opposite would be x and the adjacent would be r. Now let's consider them from the perspective of phi. What is sine of phi? Now the parentheses here are optional if you're not talking about a different quantity or uh, if you're not taking sine of a binomial, then you can just drop the parentheses. Sine phi is the same as sine parentheses phi. Sine of phi is going to be opposite over adjacent, but opposite of phi is r. So this one's going to be r over z. Don't get confused if your triangle is oriented differently. Uh, it might even be laying on its hypotenuse. Um, so don't let that confuse you. The important part is that it's opposite and hypotenuse. All right, cosine of phi is going to be, let's see, our adjacent is our x, 
and our hypotenuse is our z. Tangent of v is going to be opposite is r, adjacent is x. All right, that's enough to get you started on the 7a homework. One thing you might notice here is that uh, sine and cosine are related here in that theta's sine, sine of theta, is equal to cosine of phi. So we'll draw that out a little bit more later. It's just an interesting thing to note. Uh, one way of saying that is one angle's opposite is the other angle's hypotenuse. So uh, let's get started on that, and we'll pick up there and do some more trig.